We are back with the EU qualifiers here on Beyond the Summit. It is our second game. It'll be Kingdra versus Alliance. And don't worry, I'm not going to forget the intros this time. I'm Mott. With me is Purge, Lyrical, and Drascal. I did it, guys. I was worried. <sighs> yeah, Thumbs I know. up. You're amazing. Thanks. You know, I really, I had to try hard there, you know. Up late, but we got it done. Yeah, this is your, your first day adapting. Uh, at this point, me and Lyrical are, like, used to not sleeping very much. <laughs> We've had a couple days, but you and Drascal are, this is your, your first day of pain. Yes, Later, exactly. we'll, uh, we'll do the Under Hollow as well. We owned that thing. Yeah, we did. It was fun. Yeah, but I, didn't Ma also wake up at, like, 9 a.m.? Yes. Yeah. I See, that's a man who's midnight. made mistakes. <laughs> I have made gigantic mistakes. I thought <laughs> I thought when they talked about EU time zones, I, I I didn't realize the games were starting at like 8 a.m. EU time Actual zone. Actual EU time. Not, yeah, exactly. Not, not like normal NA time zones, right. aka late EU. Yeah, it's the the privileged life of living in NA for uh, for being a Dota fan. It was Let's just say nice. mistakes were made. You know. Yeah, it's too bad you actually had a normal sleep schedule, man. <laughs> you Unfortunate. Dumbass. Yeah. Well. You live and you learn yeah. at this point. But so, uh, uh, we can go over the team. So uh, yep. King, it's Kingdra Alliance. Kingdra is a team you guys maybe have heard about before. They were one of the two, re oh, I'm sorry, one of the four invited teams in EU. EU, the only region to have their shit together, I guess. Yeah. Have mostly re-invited. <laughs> I mean, <but> dubious. <laughs> we uh, also saw Wind and Rain make it through to the regionals in their NA team. So That's right. Uh, they do have one guy that is from Bosnia. Bosnia, yeah. So whatever anyways uh kingdra is charlie dota is a uh swedish player i believe and then we got cancel the uh, the remaining guy everybody knows about sexy bambo the uh the one and only and then we got biryu and jebs biryu from the na uh region uh, in this previous he was on dc for a while yep. and yeah then he was captain this jabs that. is a german jabs not the uh thai one that is typically in a c team yeah and they i think i think they also had uh, come with me for a while there for a couple Weeks, I would say, during January, it looks like. A massive 22 days. Yeah. He so. played with a different stack during Opens, I'm pretty sure, Yeah, too. so, but, uh, yeah, this stack has been around for a while, and I guess that's one of the big requirements for actually having, like, all the, to be invited to the regional qualifiers. It's, like, one yeah. of the few regions that had four teams. I think the only region that had four teams invited directly to the regional qualifiers, which I found really interesting, but some really good teams there. It's been a while since Bambo played in EU, I think. Like, he, I think he played C the last couple qualifiers that I've seen. Didn't he play um, on Optic for a little while, too? He's I been all over the so. place. Bambo? I think he was on Optic. I, I don't be wrong. I don't know about Optic. I don't. I it was. Don't I think know. KP. Then he went to Geek Fan, which is of course an we'll SEA team. Yeah. yeah. Hellraisers was after that, and then since uh, March of this year, he's been on Kingdra. Okay. So he's been all over the uh, the globe essentially. CIS, SEA, and now back to EU. Of course. Man just wants to play Dota. Doesn't matter where it is. Just get me in there. Yeah. That's true. It's very true. And uh, we'll see what he can do. He's very fun to watch. He's probably one of my favorite players to watch as an offlaner in terms I, of what I'm he can do. I'm definitely hoping for, for some Bambo success. I've been pulling for him for a long time for obvious reasons. Yes. And, uh, he's a very talented player, a uh, very fun guy to be around, and uh, uh, very genuinely very talented. He's probably, I mean, you, you can't compare him to like somebody like Miracle, I guess, because he's not refined perfectly. But right. I feel like his skill level and his talent level is still amazing he just doesn't yeah. he can't control his desires sometimes <laughs> um but he he's just, very he, high he skilled. goes like one step too far with his thoughts yeah. i think that's what that's like the best way to describe he's like wait i got this really sick idea but it's like 10 steps ahead <laughs> and the guy only thinks like eight steps ahead so then you just look dumb yeah. and you're like oh yeah, yeah. Well. There was a lot of times where we'd play scrims and Bambo would die like five times in the offlane by himself. And the whole time he'd be like, what are these idiots doing? It was like the whole the whole time. These, he'd just be like, this dumbass, why is he doing this? And it's like his fifth death and you're like, all right, you're better than him, but you, you've died five times. You realize right. that, right? Like yeah. it's, uh, you gotta, gotta worry about that a little. That's but, the one thing about yeah. Bambo too is like, he is never wrong, even if he's wrong. Yes, that is the Bambo. He's a little. He was a little frustrating to argue with sometimes, but it's endearing sometimes too. But uh, honestly, the like, he makes some of the sickest plays I've seen in the offlane. Like he may make some, you know, he might go like a step ahead, like you guys were talking about. But like when he does make that one play that you're not expecting him to make, it's just like holy crap. Mm -hmm. Where did that come yeah, from? Yeah, it's, it's that high was risk, high reward. Yeah, yeah. that's Bambo. To me, it, people talk about players being famous. I feel like Bambo is notorious. That's <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah, that's the, that's he's, he's like the remnant of the the demon. Sort of yeah. uh, persona, basically. Yeah, he's but, the uh, EU demon around. for sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Then I can't wait. Yeah. That's gonna be hype. And then Alliance on the other side yes. of it, they've made some changes. Yep. Uh, no longer with the old guard. We got some new folks in there, and they've been looking pretty solid as well. Yeah. The, their most recent addition was uh, Quickva. Yep. One of the many um, good things Sind isn't here. One of the many people that was ripped away out of Sin's hands. <laughs> I can actually hear him like crying right now about it. That's why yeah. he's not. That's on the painful. Panel, yeah. 
Uh, the rest of the squad is uh, Mika. How do you? I don't know. Mika. 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 I think. Is that how you Swedish player. Uh, Boxy is their their off lane. Insania is their four, and Taiga from Norway is their five. And they they've all been on the team since November of last year. Just Koikova is the recent addition. That was with uh, Loda retiring. Yep. I think he coaches them now too. I believe for, he does, for yeah, Alliance. Does. Yeah. yeah. And it's a bunch of uh, Han carryovers as well. I know that Breaky is a, a big proponent of them as well. Yeah, he's a huge fan of Nikkei from what I understand. Um, and I think that, you know, with good reason, the guy is incredibly skilled and talented. It's like the, you make that transition over. And, um, of course, like if you've got that just inherent skill and understanding of how the game's going to get played, you're going to go crazy once you get comfortable with it. There yeah. was always a, a misconception, I think, for a lot of people when Han and Dota were still... Like, Han was more popular. Obviously, it's not nearly as popular now. But people always say, oh, he was just a good Han player. He'll never hack in Dota. I don't think people understand that if you're good at something, you know how to get good at other things. Yeah. Usually, yes. Like, you, yeah. will, you will just be able to learn, especially when the games are so similar. Because mm -hmm. there was a lot of hate. Like, even going back to Fnatic, like when Fly and, and No Tail used to play for Fnatic, people were like, oh, they're just Han players, blah, blah, blah. There was a lot more, like anger and uh, argument about whose game was the best game at the time, though. So I think there's there a lot more yeah. intra-game feuding in that way to be like, we have the best esport. Or like, now we, know we wish answer. we know Dota we is better than League. Surely Dota should be bigger hey, than it is. So there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of arguments like that at the time. Sorry. No, I was a pro Han player. Thank That's you very right. much. <laughs> Draskal the legend. <laughs> no, I was. I don't think I was alive when that was a game. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time ago. It was. It it's was like ancient eight history eight in Dota. Ago. Actually, it was more than nine years. Oh, God, I'm old. It, it doesn't feel that long ago, right? You it know? doesn't, but at the same time, I was like, that had to have been at least nine years ago. Yeah. It's crazy how time flies, honestly. Like, it feels like just yesterday, you start getting into casting Dota, you, like, TI2, TI3 time for me, yeah. essentially. The it's International 8. The International 8. It's weird when you put it that way. You kind of forget about it. It's just... It's very strange, but here we are. You know, Kingdra versus Alliance, draft underway. Two very solid teams. Uh, already we just saw OG absolutely demolish the final tribe in our first game of the day. And now we'll see how these two teams fare against each other as we enter the draft. Is the this Dark Willow or Respect Ban? Were you going to say that too? Because I saw it and I was like, that's weird. I don't watch Kingdra, Kingdra play, but one thing I do see sometimes is Bambo plays uh, uh, Dark Willow and he just destroys the whole game. Yep. And I huh. think he usually plays it in the mid lane. I have, that's in pubs. I have no idea if, if this is uh, also coincides with his, his pro games. Maybe du Dark Willow's dual off lanes, but I've seen it. Seconds. It's not uncommon for me to be like, oh, Bambo's yeah. playing Dark Willow. I take a look at it and he's just like dumpstering. Five. The well, whole game. I'm sure that these teams or these players have played each other in pubs. But the other thing that maybe gives you a little bit of a leg up is Kingdra is that again, you get directly invited to the regionals. Teams don't see you playing in those opens. They don't have all that recent film on you. That's true. Um, that's something to keep in mind here as well. I'm not sure what the scrimming situation has been like. That's always something that is kind of impossible to know unless you're heavily invested with that particular team. Yeah. I'm curious to see what like. It's weird, like, I feel like we've seen so many of these typical bands, Io, Lycan, Night Stalker, you know, s one of those heroes is going to be available at the, the first stage of this game. I think the uh, the easiest way to dodge drafting knowledge is just to play, like, the other scene, like, scrim CIS teams and let CIS teams scrim EU teams. Yeah. That would be the, the, the easiest way to, to avoid this kind Especially of thing. Especially, uh, like, around a regional qualifier, too, when there's so much at stake here. That's what uh, Kingwin did, actually. They didn't scrim with any of the other EU teams. I saw them put out a post. Uh, I don't remember who it was that, that put out a post on Twitter, but they said that they only scrim CIS teams. Um, and then they, but they, then they said that Empire were going to be the ones that were going to win it. And we know how that went. <laughs> oh, I was right. It was, uh, it is Bambo, uh, Dark Willow in the, in their last four matches, which were, they played, t uh, four games, um, uh, joined Dota League, uh, 14 days ago in two of the four Bambo played off lane, um, uh, Dark Willow. His first game, he was nine, two and 12. This is bottom off. And then he was 13, five and 20. Wow! Had a lot so of it is a respect. A, a lot of so yeah, that's a respect band. No Bambo Dark Willow, unfortunately. It's, it's like the that is like the definition of a respect band. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is a very hard counter, like an opening here from Alliance too. Well, they just take two immediate answers to the hero back to back. And Quakeva, he he, they've been playing this on him all the time. So a little surprised to see them take the Lycan into it, knowing that that's a, that's a potential first round pick. I mean, sometimes you just have a game plan. And sticking to the game plan is better than changing what you want to play and then hoping that it's just going to be good against what the enemy team drafts. I'm always a proponent of, yes, picking good heroes and like countering and stuff is good, but what's better is being comfortable on what you're playing. So maybe that's just how it is for Kingdra right now. Maybe they just don't really 
Like they, they wanted to open with it because they have a plan. Yeah. And uh, they will pick up the clockwork. I actually am curious. I've seen a lot of different, it's like four used to be the common thing as clockwork. I've seen a lot of different three position clockworks recently. I don't know if you guys are have seen differently. Um, if it's, it's like been, more offline, it's heavy been a now. mix. Yeah. Uh, def it just kind of depends. A lot of teams are opening support, so sometimes they'll change halfway through and be like, "All right, offline clock, whatever." <laughs> yeah. Um, and it it can't work as long as you have a four position that can pick up the slack a little. Yeah. I think it's a bit vulnerable in the sense that if you wanted to be able to swap this hero around, you kind of want to know what the enemy supports are going to be first. Alliance just opened two core. They just opened Brew Lone Druid, so you don't know what support matchups you're going to be getting yet. So depending on what role that Clockwork is going to be playing, I think it's going to either be really good or really bad for him. Because it is okay against Lone Druid, if a, in the, once a Lone Druid gets a little bit higher level, gets his true form and stuff, and he starts bringing his Baron to the Cogs, it's not that good. Same thing for the Brewmaster. So for me, when you play Clockwork as a 3, you want good support matchups for your hero. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to get those. Do you think it's is it, is it really that role based though? Because the way that I see it is that if he separates Brewmaster from the fight, he can chain stun him until Brew dies, or he can lock in Lone Druid in late game situations and make it almost impossible to escape. So it's like, is, is that can you do that from both a support yeah, and an off lane? Or I guess my point is that if you're prioritizing him more farm in a game where he has bad matchups, that's not a good thing. So if he was a three, I would think of it worse than if he was a four. Does that make sense? Just because he's being prioritized farm, yeah. essentially. And the other thing too is you can't you can still split through battery. It's like very close timing, but it can happen. It can. Okay. Yeah. So in the meantime, while we've got a second here, I do want to talk about the other games going on. On Beyond the Summit 2, it's Boom ID versus Battle Arena Elite. That'll be with Lumi and Gods. BTS4, it's Fnatic versus TNT Tiger with Zyclops, and then more EU action on Beyond the Summit 5, King Win versus Win and Rain with Nomad. So if you guys want to check that out, you can find the streams elsewhere, or you could stick it here with us and watch Kingra versus the Lions. That Fnatic TNC Tigers game, that's going to be hype. That's, that's hype. a big one. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just going back to the rest of the draft now. Shadowfiend banned out. They don't want to give that away with the Clockwork, obviously. An easy way to win the laning stage. Uh, Lena also don't want to get bursted down uh, before the split gets off. Uh, going back to the Clockwork again, when we've been seeing it in China, it's often been that it, it sort of depends upon what the, the matchups are for the sports, like you were talking about, like a Jakiro or an ET or something like that. Yep. Then you start to see it in those positions. But um, it's the part about having to flex pick. Wind Ranger already! Wow. Hmm. Into... A blade mill That's carrier. That's gotta be support then, right? Yeah, I think so. I think this is just a rush force stuff, Wind Ranger. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but it's maybe the more likely. It, w it would feel weird to like pick Wind Ranger as your, as your, uh, as your core, as your third pick for but sure. But think Otherwise. of the, uh, especially think of the dual lane now, like Brew Wind Ranger. I would not want to lane against that as yeah. anything. Yeah. That just sounds so awful. Miserable. You never trade. Like yeah, Duncan you can't. Hayes, Wind Ray, especially uh, as a melee hero, it's not going to be fun. I, I was like just going to say they would need something like Sky to be able to deal okay. with that. So that is going to be the answer. Obvious synergy with the Clockwork too. It's it's a really solid pick. Now they have a a surefire way to kill Brew and Wind Ranger together. Lone Druid's still a bit hard, though. As long as uh, he can suck his bear inside Ooh. the cogs, he can he can live a little bit longer. It's so. a hero that hasn't been popular in a while, or yeah. Spirit picked up. Not the best in a dual lane, but uh, very good at roaming, Very pretty good at team fighting. It's not bad against Clockwork. If he gets uh, cogged in, he can just punch the Clockwork away. I think it makes up for some of the weaknesses of Wind Ranger 2, where you've got really solid team fight. Um, and I think the big question mark is going to be, how does it work in lane because you've got this lone druid that can be a very strong laner uh and you can maybe potentially like leave him solo and then I, I, is roaming even a thing well i think because the way the i don't know maybe i'm wrong about this but the way the river is with the tower so far up now at least with the earth spirit you can kind of come in from range instead of just like walking up and trying to be something like a clockwork and try to battery salt and cogs that way so you actually have a way of getting in on somebody in the mid lane if you want to well, they changed that around too, though. So there was like the that was one of the reasons why Jarek stopped playing Earth Spirit so much uh, was because they changed the distance between, so you couldn't go all the way around. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I and also just I feel like you need experience because bounty runes don't give experience anymore. Yeah. So I don't. I I feel like that he needs to be able to find kills in whatever lane he's in. I, I just I think that w with the heroes he's against right now, he's gonna be able to to contribute. If Clockwork goes on somebody, Earth Spirit can be there to split the battery salt. And he can also get on top of Skyrath Mage with an Orb of Venom. He can trade favorably there by having high HP and a good right click. That's the way that I see it, I guess. I still think that even, you know, barring the Earth Spirit pick, Alliance's lanes are ridiculously strong. So I'm looking at Kingdra and I'm going, how do you salvage the lanes? Because to me, the Enigma pick says, okay, it's a hero that buys BKB 
And then you now have a way to almost guarantee win a team fight, assuming that hero's in the right place at the right time, which sounds good on paper. But you got to make it past the laning phase. And I think that Alliance right now have like vastly superior lanes minus the Enigma matchup. I don't know if it solves the laning issue, but I wouldn't mind switching this Wind Ranger to a core and going like Silencer next. You know what else I like about the Enigma is that a lot of times Lone Druid kind of gets left there by himself at some stage, and Enigma against that is just still going to break it away. Like it's kind of like putting a Lich in in a, in a unfavorable yeah. matchup. No matter what happens, you, as long as he doesn't solo kill you or something, you're going to super deny his farm um, in in multiple ways. So the, it may be open up the supports to help win those other lanes instead. Like, I, I do like the Enigma because they understand that if they were to go back for something like a Silencer, I mean, Alliance's lanes would still probably be better than what Kingdra have right now. But I think Silencer ends up being a liability a lot of the time, especially against a lineup that does have the poten potential to push. That's why, you know, Alliance just take out DK. Right. They go, we don't want you guys to have the opportunity to rush us down because there is some susceptibility to that. It's not as Alliance's team fight isn't great. It's like, yeah, you have Panda split, and then you have Magnetize. That is the extent of your team fight utility. Against Black Hole and a Rushdown lineup like Kingdra currently have right now, I'd say that the, the 5 versus 5, I'd probably still favor Kingdra. So it, it really depends, because you don't want to be pigeonholed into picking something just to counter a fourth pick. It doesn't feel good. On the bright side, the Wind Ranger is going to be decent if it's a support against Lycan for a while, at least until he finishes Neko 3 and gets the Dispel. Um, might be one nice thing there, because usually Lycan snowballs, I feel like, from killing those those supports that can't defend themselves very well, like Warlocks and, and Skyrath Mages and things like that, with his first couple Lycan ults, and that usually gets the game a little out of hand. So they can at least defend themselves from that. Now the question is, what do Kingdra want to pick up with their fifth pick? You mentioned that the DK obviously is banned. Do they want to go for more, even more tower pressure? Something like a Death Prop, for example? Or... Oh, that sounds great. Oh, oh there's okay. the catch. Okay. More team fight. So, so they're they're rare. going more for the five man yeah. and more for the we're gonna catch you and rush you down and, and take everything before you have a chance to get the items that you want. It's a little hard versus Earth Spirit. There's definitely some stuff to worry about, but should be able to work out. And they go for an Ember Spick. I like uh, that pick Ember a lot. Response. I like the active pick from Alliance. I think they needed something like that because obviously Puck versus Ember matchup is it's a split, right? And I mean the Puck you can't really phase shift anything that Ember does in lane unless you get really lucky and manage to phase shift to Searing Chains, which is more of just a misplay. But the, the lane matchup is pretty player-based, I would say. Maybe a slight advantage to the Puck just because he hits really hard in the, the first couple of waves. But during the mid-game, ooh, that matchup gets really rough. If you don't have like a Yules or a Lotus or something like that, you get caught, you're just dead. Yeah, the Searing is going to be really annoying, especially once it hits 15. Um, remember when I talked about it, uh, uh, Bambo dying four times in the offline? Well, that game, was, he was an enigma that game. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm remembering all the way back to TI2 when they got to play their wildcard match against, uh, I don't remember what team, some Chinese team. And Enigma was uh, the hero Bambo played. I think they, they went like Enigma Darkseer. Maybe he was Darkseer. I don't remember. Let's see if they can do it. I mean, I, I've, I've been watching a lot of, in the open qualifiers for Southeast Asia, um, the win rate for Ember was astronomical because this hero felt like he could take over so many different games. It was this and Monkey King. Um, and I feel like it's it's the, the type of hero that can get out of control and almost has gained to that stage where Luna was, where I feel like you have to have an answer for it because if it gets to the late game, it's too difficult to try and shut it down. Um, maybe with the puck silence, it's one way to make it work. But I, I think that... Um, that's is interesting. I think the, the late game is still going to be quite difficult for Kingdra now, just because of Ember's mobility. Like, the Enigma seemed really good, and now you have another hero that's not... He's not really a committal type of hero unless you know you're winning the fight. So Ember Spirit, he can play on the outside, he can rush, like, he has so many choices. So it's it's a very flexible hero in this type of game. And it ends up be, uh, not being the, the matchup that I was expecting, so it's going to be the Lone Druid. Yeah, they're going to send him safe lane and just send Koi for mid. It the, makes sense. The Lone Druid does more than okay against any hero. Yeah. And uh, I've seen a lot of this, especially in EU. Like like I said, Anna plays the Ember Spirit a lot in the safe lane too, so it's kind of becoming a thing now. I guess it always has been, but... It's definitely been a lot more popular lately. Yeah. Um, just because he, he, he dual lanes fine. And I think he had an armor buff recently too. One armor, yeah. That was like two patches ago. Which is huge. He's at 3.4 now. That's not bad for armor. He used to be like the hero you right click on the laning stage. Yeah. But. He had one armor, and that was back when Poor Man's Shield was still in the game, and it still <laughs> felt bad. Yeah. He felt paper thin. Now he can at least survive. And they buffed uh, Flame Guard recently a little bit too. Yeah. Things like that help a little. 
Yeah, the level one flame guard buff actually does make a bit of a difference. Depending on the matchups, instead of like always being something, you're like, okay, this is if they have any magic damage, it's worth it. <laughs> My flame guard's just gone. Yep, it's bad. Oh, here we go. Zoning out them. Who's got the quicker fingers? Charlie does apparently. Ooh, it's gonna get punished for it okay. though. Took a lot of damage for that. Yeah. God, Wind Ranger off lane or here. just even a support right. in that role. It feels so nice. Battery or assault for us. Battery assault? They got two right here. Your E's gonna get slowed up, but it's not enough to get the kill. He's pretty tanky, obviously. Stout shield. They missed the power shot too. But that is gonna be some regen use. He has one salve, one tango. The Lycan has five more tangos to work with, but these lands so often just come down to a battle of regen usually. And they have two melee heroes against the Wind Ranger. She is gonna get so many Orb of Venom pot shots off. Yeah. It's gonna be tricky to work around this lane. If I was in a pub and I saw that lane against me, I would immediately ask for a lane switch. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Bamboo well, in trouble top lane too. He's nice gonna have TP. to teleport. Should be fine. He oh. is. He gets back to the lane. Does he have oh, a salve? He, the tower. he, he has no have salve. salve. He, he only has have a tango. tango. Well, that's it's not great oh, for him. No win run. And Sanya getting run down, but uh, he should be okay as Boxy comes in to split the damage. So it's actually, it's going okay for now. I don't know if it's going to continue this way. I mean, they just can continue to spam Power Shot and the, the slap. I mean, that was about the best that they could have hoped for, getting like a solo battery assault on Wind Ranger to trade out hits. Yeah. It still didn't feel amazing. Yeah. They've been sitting jabs mid, by the way, this entire early game for the first minute and a half, which is rather interesting. They're, he's just been spamming all of his mana, essentially, onto Quake Button the Bear, but Quake was still full HP. He still has three tankos, so he's pretty fighting good at this it's point. It's because he just used his self. He is, he is, he did ferry, uh, ferry himself out some regen, yeah. so it's just costing them something. But we'll go back and heal, and maybe we'll see Sky head bottom, perhaps, yeah. or pressure a different lane. It's why you don't really see people do this so much anymore. Because people just started ferrying out salves, and it's like, okay, maybe spent a hundred gold, and you sat here for like three minutes. So it doesn't really feel that nice unless you know you're going to be winning at least one of your other lanes, which they currently aren't. At yeah, this they're point. not. So. He's going to have to choose where to go on, on jabs, and we'll see if he rotates top, bottom, or mid. I mean, Enigma is just going to have to sit back, deny creeps, and hope the wave pushes into him top lane. He can't really do anything else other than that at this point in the game, which is a little sad for Bambo, but he'll still find farm. He's almost level 3, so he's getting stuff done for yep. sure. Yep. And uh, he uses the Eidolon to mess up the pull. Uh, so the, the wave is just pretty much always pushing. He's got a big wave coming. Yeah, this is nice. This is really big. So probably get him level four if he doesn't end up going down on, under a dive or something. Should be I'm, fine. He could also theoretically head into the jungle at some point in the future, but you prefer yeah. lane experience, obviously. Yeah, he's going to be absolutely nice. fine for now. This is a good pull, but interrupting it with the wolves as well. Yeah. That's what they need to do, because otherwise you take a ton of damage trying to interrupt that against the Wind Ranger. And now they're going to pull the creep wave through as well. Um, yeah, the big thing about the Enigma that I really like, well, actually, how much damage are they going to do this guy? Nice, yeah, fine. Um, but the, the big thing I feel like is since there's going to be a dual lane up top, it means that they're going to be under-leveled up there uh, on Alliance if he keeps on taking out those range creeps. It's not as bad as it was before, but it still kind of hurts. Yeah, that's why I kind of figured they, they might send the Ember mid, but he'd be getting the same treatment, right? He'd be yeah. getting the Skyrath sitting there, and I think that he deals a lot worse with it than what Koikva will be able to do. So. And and Mike is getting really good farm top. He's got 18 last hit, so he's having a great time right now. Yeah, they did a side pull here before the big wave came, and as a result, Bamboo loses out of like five melee creeps of experience. Um, Mike did a great job keeping Bamboo away from from that contest. So that's a four melee creeps he lost. Pretty tough. So I fed a couple Eidolons as well. They're actually gonna roll on him. They missed the roll though. It's gonna be a f just fine. Jabs rotates around though, so maybe they'll start pressuring up here. I guess it, it's weird when you have this Earth Spirit. This uh, hero used to be so involved in the early game, and he, now he's just been sitting top for the most part, which is really interesting. Well, he's playing it a bit greedy, but Earth Spirit is pretty level base. Yeah. And Sanya almost dies bottom. Oh, oh my god, the Wolves block. That's first blood for Biryu. I don't know if they can get two. I don't think they can. They have no more battery salt, no more cogs, so Boxy will be fine. But that's still first blood going to a lane that probably shouldn't have gotten it, to be There's honest. There's no way they should kill this lane, to be honest. It's just a misplay. Like, Wind Ranger should be able to stay pretty much super far from both of those heroes at all times. So he's playing it uh, playing it too fast and too loose. Three wards on the Wind Ranger, too. They spot that. Might be able to get a D ward, just anticipating where they're at, and the Clockwork might actually spot the D. It only has two now with those illusions. Doesn't yeah. look like it. Uh, but that's something to watch out for here. And Yeah, a tough one. Uh, Dying like that early as Wind Ranger really sucks. 
I don't think it's going to hurt the panda's farm that much as long as he makes his way back to lane in a timely fashion, because right now he's just not doing some warding. But even then, like, the panda doesn't feel a whole lot of pressure the waves under his tower right now. Like, he's already almost level 5, and it's 5 minutes in. Oh boy. This is going to be a big fight, concussive shot, and Sandy gets body blocked by Taiga. He actually pushes oh him away with a nice God. kick and then rolls away. That was pretty beautiful. And they got both bounties as a result. So. All right, that's why they pick our spirit, guys. <laughs> that's literally it. <laughs> so that was a pretty godlike play from Taiga. Great, great rotation from the supports on the Radiant, but just a little outsmarted there. So, um, Bamboo's just about to tick over into Arcane Boots. Looks like he's trying to be a little greedy until then, but he will be picking that up soon. What do you go for a site on Enigma now? Do you go Greaves? Do you think about going something different? Um, I th is uh, Helm of the Dominator, is that still the standard? Oh, yeah. It was Midas, and it kind of became Helm, and... Um, I think with this lineup, Helm makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, they will have one on the Lycan, but... That's true. Maybe he should skip it then. Maybe he will go Midas. But he needs some kind of mana regen first, whether it's a Soul Ring or an Arcane He's Jinx. just going to rush Blink, according to the Quick Buy. Okay. He might change uh, that. That's not that bad either. I mean, if you have a, a Blink on uh, Puck as well, and he can initiate with uh, Catch People Dream Call, and you, you get a follow-up, that's pretty huge. They still have to worry about things like Jackal Shot and Earth Spirit Sounds. Like, the fast Blink is certainly counterable, but, you know, maybe Bambo will just... Oh God, God. Like black holes. It. I know sure. what the bamboo play is going to be. They're going to try and coil it, and since the black hole spins people now, he's going to try and throw the black hole so it breaks the tether. Oh, that's possible. It's black a lot of damage. And then they're going to miss the black hole. Are they really going to die? That's that would have been a hard one. That's a Treads Brewmaster, <laughs> under tower, extra armor. Bamboo's getting dive bottom. He looks pretty dead to me. Yeah, they have the, the flame guard up. Mike will secure that kill. Now Jabs is in trouble. He's level two, by the way, and he's also super th paper thin. And Sandia doesn't have a, a shackle shot, but Tiger's actually in pretty deep. He can roll away, and he'll try the TP. Nice. He'll lose your up. They're not going to get there in time. Nice play again from Tiger to get out of that situation. Yeah. So again, this, uh, his allies rotate, but it's not for value. This is uh, two rotations now that don't work out. If the puck was six, they potentially get something there, but Cancel didn't have his ulti, so. Man, they have the top three net with heroes on Alliance. They currently have a 1k lead. I mean, everything is going well for them. Quickfa is uh, about to have his full uh, Helm of the Dominator. He'll build into Radiance after that. They, obviously, the Brewmaster's getting a lot of farm, as well as Mikkei. So everything is going really well for Alliance right now, but maybe that changes once the Black Hole comes out or a couple of different abilities for Kingdra. Ember is playing very aggressive there on the Enigma. Um, like it's worth doing. It's, it's really nice. You, you got to pressure this hero. If you don't, then you're, you're making a mistake, in my opinion. So it's just he's straightforward. It's easy to kill. They both at six at the same time. Um, if you can get on top of him, he can't defend himself very well. Though the only his only salvation is basically rotation backups, and that's why they keep te teleporting. But it's, but they're just not quite in the right place at the right time. I think it's enough just for them to get like a decent amount out of the laning phase. Like the Enigma being level 6 at 8 minutes. Gets the sounds off on bottom. That's a split. They get off the silence. The battery still the cogs. Yes, they rotated close. in nicely and looked away for half a second and still caught the kill, but man. He, he used the silence, or he tried to brew split plenty early. It was a, it was a good move by him, but just in time, the, the Skyrath Mage gets in range. It's a big kill. But I don't think Kingdra really need to win their lane super hard, or even at all, to be honest. It's... It's putting a lot of emphasis on the Puck and the Enigma to make the team fights happen, but I think if they can take a couple of good engagements, losing the early game and losing the lanes won't really hurt them so much. Like, Lycan's one of those heroes that if he has time to hit people, it doesn't matter if you're, like, an item down or whatever. You're going to shred they whoever got the you're bear. on. He has no bear for 70 seconds, so that's a little... Oh, that was the second bear. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, that's a bad one. Yep. That's kind of brutal. Got the tower, though. Shackle shot top. They're looking for Kid. No, Bambo is going to get dope. He does have his black hole, but he's going to get silenced. Boulder Smash comes out. He should be dead. Remnant coming in. No way he uses the black hole there. There's nobody rotating in. Jabs is here, but he's out of mana. He has a mango. I don't think he can find a kill on Sandy. He'll try, but the power shot will execute him. That's two dead at 3k lead, plus the tier 1 tower mid four aligns. So. Just not enough survivability on Bambo here. Uh, he picks up a magic stick, but I feel like if he had like a, a wand and a raindrop or something that he would be surviving these dives maybe but it's just way too much damage and he can't stop them once he once he gets so low so fast and i think the other thing there is you, i think they anticipated you know the the gank coming from the ember but they weren't expecting the earth spirit because they tp in the skyrath right if skyrath doesn't show up there and the earth spirit doesn't show up as well then they're going to be able to maybe turn that with a black hole so the other thing is it depends on who tps from kingdra i think right. cancel needs to be the one tping like, Cancel is the one who almost assures that you're going to get a kill out of that if he has Coil. Yeah. He does have it, but he does not have a TP right now. So yeah, That's why. I mean, it's 
it's unfortunate. I mean, they lost their mid-tier one for that too, even getting a second bear. I still think it makes it worth it for Alliance because they, they do want to be the ones pressuring. Against an Enigma, if the game stretches out and you don't have guaranteed ways to stop Black Hole through BKB, there's always a chance that you can lose. Might not be a big chance, but there's always a chance. Battle for the runes. Oh, he's going to pop the ultimate now and see if he can maybe get caught here, but it looks like they're just going to run away. They were, it looked like they were battling top with the, the Ember Spirit. He got pretty low, but he does get out from EK. Yeah, they're still chasing uh, bottom, but... He was actually jungling, basically. The, the only other fight was Earth Spirit was fighting Bambo for the okay. bounty run in. Earth Spirit got it, so... Just pretty standard stuff. A lot of Eidolons have died, to be honest. I've seen at least like 10 or 10, or 10 plus He die. just pops Flame Guard, and he, they just cleans up the Eidolons. Yeah. Speeds away gold, essentially. Yeah. And that's like almost his bots. He's 500 gold away for Mikke's bots on the Ember Spirit, plus the uh, Aquila bottle. So he's clearly far and away the net worth leader at this point. They'll try to push mid, though. They had This is kind of the timing they were looking for. They have the Helm of the Dominator, so they just rotate mid with Charlie, and they just take a t easy tier one, which is nice. That's great. Huh? They might have gone for Charlie picking up the creep down bottom. They might still go for it if they kill off this tower, and then Lycan could have a siege creep. I don't know if he wants to keep the other one for kills or not, but feels like having a siege creep and pushing early is a lot of value this game. Oh, shot. Good, good shot. They found Miki. They're going to push him. He's going to get Black Hole. Nice combination there. Battery Sold. He's low on mana. He does have stick charges, and Snare comes out. He can't run it away. He didn't have one set down to begin with. Very big kill. Black Hole used effectively for Kingdra and Bambo. That was just in time. I thought he was going to get out of that, but uh, didn't even gamble on the Midnight Pulse either. He did not want to hesitate. That was their only opportunity to kill that guy. He didn't even have a Remnant out. It's actually a misplay. Yeah. And now uh, they have Blink, Coil, and Cancel if they want to try to take a fight here. If you're, you can get a good uh, flare. But now though. they're going to roll in. Taiga gets off a nice ultimate as well. Bruce Split coming out. Charlie's silenced up. He doesn't have shift shift anyway. They're going to Cyclone up. Bambo now as well. Charlie's Shackle shot into the tree. He's going to fall. It looks like Power Shot not even needed. Meanwhile, they'll lose Koikfa on the other side. And it's going to be a two-for-one trade as they take the Tier 1 tower. Uh, or they were taking the fight elsewhere. Where did they die on the Enigma? Oh, he, just, he, yeah, died he was, he was up top. Yeah, he was okay. tough. He was just cycloned by the panda. Oh, that's right. Tried to teleport, didn't work out. So I'd say it's not terrible for Kingdra, considering they just killed an Ember Spirit. Um, they do lose two important heroes, but killing the lone druid as well feels good. Like, it was the blink reveal, and that's the perfect hero to find the kill on, because they had just hero? taken out the Ember right beforehand, too. Blink on who? On the bl uh, puck. Oh, okay. So you think it's okay that they, they used Black Hole and didn't get a tower? Uh, it's not great, but at least they killed the lone druid. Is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean both cores died. Yeah, right. That's that's the silver lining. I don't know. I feel like with a Lycan lineup and Black Hole and stuff, like every time you cast a, that ultimate and you don't get an objective, I mean, sure, it doesn't necessarily put you super far behind, but it doesn't feel good either. It just feels like not a full committal because they had just rotated to take mid as well, and it wasn't a fight there. They basically got mid for free. Then they rotate top. They end up killing Ember Spirit. It feels like not. The worst. There's a BOTs up on Ember now, so he's really far ahead, and he's gonna be able to push lanes out. So from here on out, the pressure is gonna be hard. Silence on to cancel. Boulder smash coming in. Clap. Hook shot to counter initiate. Waiting Rift recoil, point. but he's still gonna get crit down and killed. Now Biryu stuck in the Thunderdome with Boxy and Taiga. He is pretty tanky. The battery's still going. Boxy has no mana left. He does have 18 wand charges to be fair, so he's gonna be able to clap again. You can also drunken haze. Nice kick, but it does miss from Taiga. They'll still chase him down. The oh, cogs no. brings in Boxy, which brings down the clockwork, so it's going to be two kills for Alliance. They do take the tier one tower top lane, though, with Kid and Charlie, Bambo and Charlie. That was the vacuum cog. Sucked them in from, like, 300 range. Yeah, yeah. it was good. So they, they end up taking top anyways, um, but losing the puck is no good there. He must have used orb to farm. Cause he did, yeah. Instantly gets caught and was super screwed there. Yeah, it feels like now they actually are a, a play behind, it feels like, an Alliance just a little bit ahead of them, taking down the tier two tower also. It is starting to feel a little bit rough. Um, man. That Helm of the Dominator build on Lone Druid, too, just giving them a nice little bit of regen constantly. And also, it's the, uh, is it the Savage Roar that you get the bonus damage to on your Helm Creep? Uh, Battle Cry. Battle, Battle Cry, Cry. Yeah. that's the one. <coughs> the hell did I say? Savage Roar. Savage that's Roar. that's the fear. <laughs> I don't play this here. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> just both angry. Just, what's the difference, right? <laughs> I'm savagely Battle Crying. He's also rabid, here? too. He's got a lot of things going wrong for Lone Druid, to be that's honest. True. So they, they didn't go the blink on the Brewmaster. I guess they don't need it with the roll from Taiga. He had the hood first, so he just wants to stay alive. I don't think he's ever... Huh. He, he might not die unless they like focus him on the Lycan or anything. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what they're looking at. They're like, look at our enemy lineup. It's a Lycan carry, and everything else is nukes. If he just gets a hood, he's going to walk in, take damage, and still be able to get his ult off later. So yeah. he just has to survive, basically, the, the silence 
um, from Sky and from Puck, and that's not going to be too hard. So I think this is a, a nice adjustment. Definitely one of the, the lackings in King Joe's lineup. They right. just don't have carry potential. They do have Blink on to Bambo, and he is running over. Beer, you gets off a nice hook shot. They get off the sounds. They might just leave Tiger here to die, and I think they will. Cancel will try to chase oh. it. It's a three-man coil. The Wind Rift coming in as well. Can they find the hole? They needed to Blink in. Bambo's not quite there yet. He's looking for it. He's about to go. Mike is going to try to run it away. He'll be able to get that for now, and now they're going to turn on to Boxy instead. They cannot find Mike. Midnight Pulse comes in. They silence him up. He Jeez. cannot use his ultimate. That's two dead. They could have gotten three, but they weren't quite in position just in time, so. The hood did not seem like a hood there. <laughs> it was just a death from full HP. I love that too, like right up at the top, like his brewmaster is dying and was like, let me just go get the bounty rune real quick. Yeah, and then ya. he remnants away. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> at least Ember lived. That's uh, definitely the good thing they had going for them. But They were underneath that ward, I believe, um, as well, that was up on the high ground. Uh, Those are both our wards. So, or the, oh. the radiant one. I think it just expired. It did. There was a word oh, there. There's a word yeah. here at it, the rune? Uh, no, by oh, the tier side. one tower. Okay, yeah. I see. All right. Yeah, that high ground. Gotcha. I see. Explains the hook shot. I, I mean, yeah. it, was, it was really good for Kangtra, though, because they didn't have to commit black hole. Like, sure, getting the one extra kill, again, like, because the tier one mid and top are already dead, I would prefer to see them use it, like, even more aggressively than that. Like, but. try to get in and, like, fight for a tier two or fight for Roche or something. Because you had to like it. But with that one fight, they do get blinked down. So the next yeah. fight, he's going to be able to, to respond accordingly. Still a very squishy hero. 938 massive HP on the Enigma foot. Picks up the magic resistance perk, and he's going to rush BKB, and that's going to allow him to black hole for the rest of the game. Yeah, he's just going for like a straight win condition. The, you can't stop me. I'm getting this black hole. If you look right now, just how the map is split up, it looks like Alliance has so much more of it. They're inside yeah. the Radiant jungle. They're kind of playing their own jungle up to that hard camp. And then on top of that, they've got Vision in the other areas where they would see Kingdra farming. So they're kind of just completely controlling the map right now. And I feel like this is one of the big differences that you see um, that, that separates team skill levels. Well, it's also because of the heroes. Yeah. Like, for instance, Ember is very mo uh, mobile. He can just be anywhere he wants all the time. The Lone Druid and the Brewmaster both have tremendous amounts of HP, so it's hard for you to send more or le less than three heroes. You want to send three to ensure that this guy is going to die. So because the Kingtra have to commit so many to killing them, they can play like this because at best they're going to kill one or they're going to kill two. They're not going to kill three or four unless you're actively going for a team fight. It's almost a Radiance now on the Lone Druid. He's a mere 400 away with that tower last hit, so Kingdra's got to feel a little bit pulled together here in their side of the map. But so they smoke for, for Kingdra with Cancel and Biryu. They didn't do it under reward. They were close to the Uber Cliff. And they might actually find Boxy. Maybe not the target they want. They would probably prefer Mike or Koikfa. Yeah, they definitely want to find the one. Yeah, they're just right going to wrap all the way around. But that's so just two supports top for now. They, they tricked the wrong rune, basically, or the wrong shrine. Uh, the the Lundred went to the other side. He had, he was just briefly top. They expected to see him farming towards the right in their jungle. And oh, instead, they are diving on the Bambo. Bambo. And he might survive. He has stick charges. All right, magnetizes too much damage. Cancel jumps back in. They get off the winning grip. They'll probably find it Sanya out of this. I don't know if they're going to get anything else. Tiger will try for a TP, and he will be oh. not successful. Nice oh. hook from here. you right in time. He's still going to roll away, but Cancel should have a blink and an orb just in a, in a moment here. And then they just rotate him with jabs, and they can cut some shot, and he dies anyway. So, Well, it's just two supports for Bambo's death, but it is something for Kangdra at least. I'm going to yeah, say that, worth. It, it, it feels worth for Kangdra, but at the same time, you're not killing any cores. All three of the cores of Alliance are still the top net yeah. worth. Yeah, like, yep, exactly. That's the part that hurts. That's that's where you go, okay, we had to smoke our, our two supports and our mid hero just to kill some supports. And they wasted like 15 seconds looking in the enemy jungle where there was nobody there. The the Radiance gets secured in the meantime. That's absolutely uh, not the best situation. Like their Alliance is just controlling the map so well. Yeah. And the only way the Kingdra gets out is by smoking right now. They don't have good Shadow Blades and this is, here comes the fight. They're going to see Koikfa. They find Mike as well. Beery pops the cogs. They get off the silence oh. on the Boxy. They could go for a hole. I don't think they want to, though. He's going to try for it, but it's just on a one. Mystic Clear. If they can kill Boxy, it might be good. He's still silenced. Not still dead alive. yet. He's still alive. He's going to take down. He oh. can't get the ultimate off, but they still get two at the end of it for Alliance. Jabs will run. Cancel comes back in with a Dream Call finally. Here comes Charlie. He's got his ultimate. Gets off a Center Conqueror stop. Summons the Wolves, and Koikfa's going to get run down. But here's Insania looking for a Shack Shot back up in five as well. TPing it. Charlie getting low. The Focus Fire. Insania was dancing around him. Him with the Wind Ranger, just keeps plucking away with the Javelin. They find four kills. They only lose Boxy. He's so damn tanky, it takes him like 10 minutes to die every fight, I swear to God. It's kind of low and lone Druid, but oh, they're actually going to get the Soon Chains. Boulder Stun Smash, follow -up. they actually get the kill. They got all five. They have to use the the Tier 3 Tower. They have buybacks on both the Puck and the Lycan. They don't want to have to use them. I'm not sure they're going to back up for lines until they get those buybacks out. There's no Black Hole threat. 
I'm not sure how much longer they want to keep going, though, especially in the Midnight Pulse. Look at this jab. He's HP. just, is he dead? Scarath Mage? Oh, I think they're both. 24 oh. HP. Tyga's in a little bit deep, but he's going to secure the tier 3 tower from him, so it's probably worth it if he dies. And he might not even. All right, oh, he's going to just, yeah, he will be. That entire fight also took place without an Earth Spirit in them for the majority of it. So if you're winning that fight without, like, your big team fight four, Alliance are in such a huge lead in this game. Bambo knew that he had to black hole to kill the Brewmaster, otherwise they definitely lose a fight, but they still lost the fight anyways. They're, they're having this damage problem right now. That is very, very clear. And even Bambo himself can't stay alive very well. He's jumping into these engagements, but if they focus him at all, he dies. The other thing, too, is when the black hole came out, the Lycan wasn't there yet. Yeah, so it took a while to get if there. If the Lycan's there, I think that that hero dies a lot faster, and then you don't have this really weird situation where Boxy lives through an entire black hole channel, <laughs> yep. and then it still isn't dead. That, that's really the part that hurt them the most, is but how I, much it took. I assume he did that just because he knew the stuns were on cooldown. Like, I was expecting him to be searing chains, but um, he, obviously if that was up, he would have interrupted the black hole. So no, he, he, he did eventually. It was just a late chains. Okay. He did cancel it. It just wasn't right away. I mean, this is going to get even harder. Boxy is going to... He's going to have an A on this pretty soon. And then how do you kill this guy at all? Yeah, you're going to have to preemptively pop it somehow. I'm not really sure how King Jir are going to go about that, but... Yeah, it's going to be tough to fight around. They're getting more and more items. The Windridge is still building into, I think, uh, she's going to have Maelstrom soon. So she'll have some extra damage that they probably don't even need in this game right now. They're up 8k, 21 minutes in, 13 to 10 kill score. But Kingdra, they've lost the Tier 3 tower. They're about to lose their top shrine, potentially, and the Tier 2 tower. Roche hasn't been taken yet. Lycan has picked up the Necro 3, so he does do a lot of damage right now if they can find the right fight, the right hole. But they still don't have hole for another 40 seconds. And I don't think they want to defend a Tier 2 tower. In fact, it's already dead. Yeah, they're going to keep pushing out these lanes. You can see Puck's down bottom. They're doing it continuously. They're going to send one back now to deal with that. That's the Ember. Because he can come back immediately with the Remnant if He's he wants. He's just everywhere. Um, and this is the, the big issue that we talked about during the draft, that at a certain point, you need a way to deal with this Ember and to catch him out. And it's not good enough to just have one hero that's there. Like, you need two to be able to kill him. And even then, it's going to be testy. Like, you probably need three. Uh, and if you're not showing three heroes on the map, then... He's going to be playing safe. They have four heroes down there right now. And I don't even know if he's going to die. It's going to be hard. They're going to they're gonna have to silence him, and they're going to have to get a stun follow-up afterwards. But he's got Yules. Just away. Yeah, the, silence, so. out. the other thing, too, that I, I think the reason why we haven't been seeing so much in is because of Aeon Disc. Like, Aeon oh, yeah. Disc makes it so that the one thing that you want to do is just black hole that core hero and make sure he dies. Well, Boxy and the Ember are both going to have Aeon Discs. So unless you have some way of triggering them beforehand, the black hole's not going to kill. And that's... I mean, good luck doing that. Yeah, I don't know. I, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know how they're going to do it. Well, they're still pushing pretty well in the meantime. King Joe's going to take the bot two towers, but here comes the high ground again from Alliance. Yeah, they're just pushing in. They don't even have a creep wave here yet. They have one mid, obviously, but... Hole is back up. They have split for Boxy. And uh, as long as he Mike uses that... A good job. Yeah, they're they're still they're still pushing. He's he's it's actually a taking a tier three tower, yeah. and they're okay. they're maybe thinking about killing this Baron, taking a fight. How long does Charlie stay? Is the question. Is it, yeah, he's gonna TP home now, and they have to back up now for Alliance. So that that was they got three towers out of that bottom push for Kingdra, which is huge. It's a it's a decent push. It's kind of surprising they were allowed to get away with that. I just feel like Alliance felt like they had such a strong grip on the game that the, this felt like an easy high ground. They go high ground. Let the bear harass and take the racks that's open. Yeah, but when, when you're in a super advantageous position, don't you just always defend? Uh, because when you're... Okay, let's let's say you know it's not some scenario where they're hitting a tier 1 and you're hitting a Rax. Obviously, you would take that trade. But if they're hitting your tier 3 and you're hitting their base, it feels like that's a win for the team that's losing. Because yeah, you're getting yeah. an even trade when you're really far behind. I feel like you should oftentimes just always take the fight when you're that far ahead. You if, know the issue was was that it was the same lane. The lane yeah. that they were pushing was the lane that they were trying to push. So it's like they, they didn't have creeps. Took forever to get there. They're going in. Yeah, they're going to dive them. in. They've got the silence on the boxy. Oh. He doesn't have and just yet. Mystic Flare, but he's probably still fine. Hook shot. Can he get his ultimate off? He certainly can. And now the fight changes dram dramatically. Bambo goes in, but doesn't go for the Black Boys Cyclones. late. Cyclones. And Charlie's running at Quakefa, but they're still killing the rest of the heroes in the back line. They have to buy back immediately on Clockwork. Oh, Good yeah. chains on two. And here die. comes the Brewmaster. Holy and crap. that is two dead heroes, Jabs and Bambo, both dead. No buyback on Bambo, which means no Black Hole for 40 seconds at this point. They have no more ultimate on the Lycan. I don't know if Alliance want to push their luck. They would like to get this bottom Rex, but it is back to protected now. 
Miki's gonna Yules, or rather get Yules, like wound up in the air. They have Fear You in the cogs. He did buy back. He's gonna get shackled for now and latched oh, to a wolf as well. How unfortunate can you get? Oh. Kingdra will lose two. They lose a lot more than that, including their racks down bottom. They they only get the kill onto Taiga on the Earth Spirit and uh, great fight for Alliance there. Hmm. And uh, Enigma has a Mithril Hammer in his backpack <laughs> stash. I, I, I don't know when he bought that, but I think that's a huge mistake. If he has buyback there, they can actually buy back Bambo and maybe take the fight, but without Black Hole, it's just, it's a it's a lost one there. It's so. so dangerous though, right, to buy back there, because if you die again, that's just guaranteed Roche and like potentially just the end of the game. Yeah, delay BKB and everything. I don't, it's, that's a hard buyback, I think, to decide if you're going to do it or not. Oh, Cancel. Cancel's getting run up by the entire enemy team, and Jabs is here for help, but he's probably the one that's going to die in his stead. They clap, but they miss it, because Cancel did blink out, Remnant through Mike a little bit low in HP. Cancel juking and jiving, but he's going to get caught rolling boulder, and that is a dead puck. Was it worth it for the rune? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, it's actually crazy the Lions aren't even contemplating Roshan. This is the, yeah. the time to go. <laughs> I, th I thought they would head into the pit immediately. They want to push out top and farm, I guess. Maybe, maybe they just don't want to bother because they know Black Hole's there. It's, it's yeah. just not worth it. Yeah, that they're, is dangerous. They're, they're but so uh, your control. damage is dead, right? Like, the Skywrath is dead. That's a huge chunk of damage. Puck is dead. That's another huge and chunk of damage. And they don't have a shrine. <laughs> you do it fast. Yeah, you've already taken the shrine. Like, how are they going to yeah, get there? That's fair. It's a long day, best I guess of it's, ones. It's a moot <laughs> point because they're still, like, in a huge lead anyway. Right. Like, it doesn't really matter one way or the other unless Alliance really slip up. I think that you're right, though. This is the type of thing that other teams that maybe are, uh, you know, they might run into later on in the qualifiers would punish, um, depending upon how that goes. So I mean, from Kingdra's position, I don't really know how you punish. That's my point. Exactly. Like, it, it feels like, okay, you could push the lanes if they're roaching. You could maybe go over there with your Enigma and buy back on the puck and hope for the best. And yes, this is the, the non-committal way. A lot of teams say that, you know, going for Roche in a game like this is a way for you to throw, because it is that, like, enclosed space that you're fighting around against Enigma. There's silence there, forcing the Brewmaster oh. to not ulti. They found themselves a little opening, though. Oh, gonna die. Fear you is so alone. And and Charlie's just getting run out, he's getting run at and Cyclone by the Brewmaster. And they're just gonna push the base. Taiga's low to the Necro units, but quick for getting run at by Cancel. Oh, the smoke saves him. He actually survived. Yep, smoked wow. the creeps. And, and like now Charlie is dead because he has no way to survive without his shapeshift. So he does have buyback, but at this point, is it really going to matter? They still have hole. He has his BKB. Oh, no, he's, he's rooted, though. Maybe this he can get dangerous. a BKB hole off, although he might actually just die to Insania. Yep. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> he has no buyback either. That's so painful. Oh. They finally get the kill on the Wind Ranger, but does it really matter? That's no. the mid racks, the top racks, the top tower is likely to fall before Enigma gets up, and this game is just over. Yep. So here's a question as we're kind of looking at this retroactively now, I suppose. Do you think it would have been better to put Sky bottom with a Lycan and then just let the mid be a 1v1 and then have Clockwork and Enigma top? Uh, I, th I think so. I think that that's why we've been seeing more often than not 2 1 2 happen. Like, this is one of Because I'm thinking issues. about like what it actually did to put the Skywrath mid. The Lone Druid did not really get hindered that much. I mean, yep. sure, he was forced to buy some regen, but ultimately he still managed to get his items at a pretty good timing. Bottom lane, you got crushed because it's a Brewmaster Wind Ranger lane and you're playing uh, two melee into did, that. Did he get crushed though? Clock got first blood. I mean, they shouldn't have gotten a kill. Absolutely yeah. not. That was a good thing for them, for sure. And the Lycan's item timings weren't necessarily super delayed, but I feel if you bring the Skywrath down there, the Wind Ranger has a lot harder of a time playing the lane, and then when you rotate later, you have a lot more kill potential. Like, if the clock TPs to the bottom lane, then you kill, right? So I'm thinking maybe there was a better way to set up the lane so that you could you could win top. Like, not just do okay, but, like, literally win the lane if you have the Enigma and the Clockwork there, because how are how is Ember and Earth Spirit going to go on that? Yeah. I, I just feel like, though, the way that half the lane happened in the safe lane for Kingdra was fine. Like... Lycan actually had pretty decent farm the whole game. Clockwork got the first blood. The 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 thing I agree that uh, shutting down Lone Druid wasn't that great. Why not put Sky top maybe or something like that? I mean the dual lane with Enigma. Yeah, not you could, so I good, mean either way. I just mean like any iteration of a, of side lanes having two heroes instead of the mid lane having two heroes. Like Move Sky the somewhere else. Sky could have zoned Ember Spirit or trade hits with Earth Spirit. Typically not a great dual lane hero. But when Earth Spirit's in that situation where he's like against a hero that can't defend himself, that isn't a typical solo hero. That's the guy where Earth Spirit shines. Can gap close. Can disable. Can set up kills. Well, the 
big thing he did was just pulled. He just pulled yeah. and got items, and then he got levels, and then he was able to make an impact right. in the mid game. So yeah, I, I think that they got away with the free one there. When you get away with the yeah. free lane for both Ember and Earth Spirit, when the spirits are online, That's all true. they need is this guy. It's gonna be a bad time. I didn't even realize that was a Storm Spirit until you held it up. Hey, <laughs> um, man, Alliance 2018 yeah. still picking Lone Druid and winning. It's yeah. happening. That was good, man. Two quick games in a row, too. 28 minutes for Alliance. They crushed it. They looked really strong in this particular matchup, too. I mean, back-to-back yeah. -back games between Alliance and OG. Both looking good. But well, uh, our next match is Wind and Rain versus Kingdra. Uh, Wind and Rain is the Ritsu, Brial, Frev, Milan, Kitrak uh, lineup. Yep. Are they actually in EU while they play this, or are they still playing remote? I would assume no idea, they're right? in EU... If they're playing an EU qualifier, I mean, I don't actually know. I have well the the Kingdra double header. That's yeah, it's a, a good match. We'll have to get back into it uh, after this loss, 28 minutes in. But uh, for now, we will take a break. Before we do, I want to mention that we do have a couple of other games going on on BTS2. Of course, with Lumian Gods, we also have Fnatic versus TNC Tiger with Zyklops on BTS4, and BTS5 is doing the other side of the EU uh, qualifiers. So with that said, we'll jump into a quick quick break. We'll get our next game, which is, of course, Kingdra versus Wind and Rain next. We'll see you guys in just a moment. Stick around, folks.